Before we start on the hood, let's just change the name of the trunk object. We've just got it as plain here. Let's just call it trunk. And before we create our polygon plane for the hood, let's go ahead and select the scene collection at the top of the outliner. And now when we create a new object, it will go into that collection instead of the reference. All right, so let's press Shift A, Mesh, Plane. And I think I'll change back to that studio lighting here. So now let's go to the top view with the 7 key on the numpad. I'll press Alt-Z. And let's pull this forward. And then maybe shrink it down a little bit like this. Get it in place about like that. Yeah, there we go. Now let's tab into edit mode and let's cut it in half. Let's press control R and drop an edge loop down the center. I'll hit enter two times to make sure I don't move that edge. And then I'll hit the three key and select this side and let's hit delete and delete faces. Now with this, let's go ahead and go to the modifiers tab, add modifier and choose mirror. And let's also be sure and choose clipping here and let's turn on the edit cage here. All right, so if I hit the one key to go to vertex mode, we can begin moving these points around. I can hit G and pull this up to here and let's move this one over to here. So we're beginning to get that basic shape. Let's go to the side view and let's hit the A key and let's bring this up so that the back is in line right over here. Now these points, of course, are not in line. I'll click and drag here. I've changed this from tweak to select box so I can click and drag. And then I'll use the move tool here. I'll, I'll drag this down maybe to there and maybe move this down just a little bit like that. So we're just beginning to get that basic shape. And of course, we're gonna need more edge loops to curve that. So let's go to the quad view. Let's press Control Alt. Q so we can see these four different views. I'll tumble around here in the 3D view. And let's uh, zoom in here so we can see the front and the side and the top. And let's begin adding some edge loops to kind of reshape this. It looks like we could uh, grab this point and move this down a bit like this, right? Maybe move it out just a bit here. There we go. And then let's add an edge loop well, let's add an edge loop this way first. I'll press Control R and click two times. And then I'll come over here into the side view and drag it up a bit so we get that curve going there. Let's do that again. Let's press Control R and drop that here. And then I'll click and drag in the Z axis and pull that up a bit. Now, as we do this, we can begin moving these points around. So I'm going to hit G and move this over. And I'll move these over. So I'm just keeping an eye on the reference images here in each of the viewports so that we never get too far out of alignment as we're adding new edge loops. All right, I'm going to go ahead and add one up here. And it doesn't look like we need to do too much here. I'll just bring that up a bit and bring this point down a bit over in the front view like this. And then let's um, begin adding some edge loops this way as well. I'll press Control R and I'm just going to drop this right here and then use these points to kind of pull up. But it looks to me if I pull up like this, then I've got a problem here. So what let's do is let's rotate this line of points from this point here. So instead of just pulling all of these up, let's deselect this with shift click and then Select it again, shift click one more time, and notice that the color changed. It's now white, and that means it's the last one that we've selected, and therefore it's the active component. And if we come up here to this pull down right here, this transform pivot point, you can see we've got an active element. Currently, we're on median point, which is basically the center of the selected components. We can change this to active element, and now you can see our move gizmo has moved to this point, right? We have it here, even though all these are selected, our pivot point is now at the active element, which means we can come over here into the side view and hit the R key and rotate at that point, right? So I can rotate these up so we get a little bit more of a curve there, maybe something like this. 
we could do that with the center row as well. I could press Alt click here. Oh, it looks like this um, is the active point already, so that's good. I can press R and rotate here in the uh, side view, and I'm rotating around the x-axis here, so I can maybe move that up a bit so it's in line here, and we're getting more of a curve there. I think I'll grab this one and move it up just a little bit to get it in line here. All right, I think we're going to need more edges so we can have enough geometry to extrude this vent on the top of the hood. So what let's do is let's add a few more edge loops. I'm gonna add one right down here so we can have an edge at the bottom of that vent right here. So I'll press Control R and click and maybe move this down just a bit like this. There we go. And then let's move it up to keep it in line with that curve. I'll move it up here and then it looks like we need to move it down here and maybe pull these out. So once again, every time we do anything, every time we add anything, take a look at all our views and see how we're doing, see if anything needs to be adjusted. All right, it looks like um, these in here could be, we could maybe slide this along this edge. I'll hit G two times and slide that up. We could do the same thing here, although we're gonna be pulling these down, I think. And maybe we can line these up. I'll hit G two times to slide that vertex along that edge and do that again here. And then let's go ahead and add that edge loop here. Control R and right in here. I'll drop one here. Looks like we're doing pretty well here. Just going to try and line these up a little bit better. And maybe let's add an edge out here as well. Control R and I'll do that one. This one we could maybe move up some, so let's uh, shift select this point and then select it again with the shift key and then let's press RX and let's rotate this up just a bit. We can also hold the shift key down so it moves a little bit slower, have a little bit more control over it as we rotate it, so there we go. And then it looks like we're just gonna need to maybe move these around a bit just to make sure everything curves in the proper way. We may want to move these down a bit. So once again, keep an eye on all of your viewports, see how they're doing. All right, now let's press Control Alt Q to come out of that quad view and let's add a subdivision surface modifier to see how we're doing. I'll come up here to add modifier subdivision surface. I'll increase the viewport levels to 2. And let's uh, go back to the top view with the 7 key. And now we can kind of see the curvature of what it's doing with that subdivision surface modifier. And now we can take these points and begin moving them so that curvature matches more closely to the reference drawing. So I can begin moving these around to get those in place a little bit better like this. Something like that. And let's move these so we can see that these are aligned as well. Maybe I'll move these out some. Take this one, hit G, move it out a bit. So we're just trying to line up the edge of that smooth mesh. I'm going to hit G two times to move this just a bit. All right, let's take a look at it now. I'm going to press Alt-Z. And let's also smooth it. I'll right-click and choose Shade Smooth. There we go. And yeah, that's looking pretty good actually. Let's come up here to our viewport shading and change the matte cap and take a look at it. That looks pretty smooth. We can also take a look at it with a different matte cap. There's a uh, silver shiny one here. We could take a look at that. Yeah, I think that's looking pretty good. So in the next video, we're gonna try something a little different so that we can extrude up out of the hood this vent right here. And one of the problems we can have when trying to do that is with it smoothed, when we extrude something up or in, it's going to distort the curvature of our object. And there's a great process to help with that using Blender's shrink wrap tool. So in the next video, we'll work on that.